Hello everyone. So in the previous part, we have discussed about the general definition of the skew. And now it's the time uh, to understand the importance of a skew and how it is going to impact our timing analysis. So here I have captured only two flip-flops out of the several one from the previous part. I have also removed the combinational logic between these two flip-flops and I just represented that thing with the help of interconnected rails. So this this removal is only for uh, simplicity purpose. So whenever we are talking about the timing analysis, in general we have some assumptions or I can say there are some unsaid rules. Like if the both the flip-flops are from the same clock domain. So like here, the same clock is driving these two flip-flops. That means these, these two flip-flops are from the same clock domain. And it's not a half cycle path or the multi cycle path. What is half cycle path or the multi cycle path? Maybe we can discuss uh, next time. So, for the uh, right now, you just uh, remember that if it is not a half cycle path or the multi cycle path, data launched by FF1 is going to capture by FF2 in the next clock edge. So, this is an unsaid rule. Everything in the design is as per this assumption. You can definitely define a lot of constraints but even after that this one is a unset constraint or unset rules now come back to the SKU so SKU basically is a type of constraint which we are applying on the clock path and somehow data path has a lot of dependency on this constraint so let's see how the delay of the data path has a dependency on the clock skew. So that will help you to understand the importance of the skew. This is our clock S and I'm saying that this is a, a source clock. So for these two flip flops, this is a source clock. So th this is your clock S. Now with a small delay, that is, uh, I can say that delay is with respect to the delay of the buffer or this interconnect delay so you will get the CLK1 this clock is there similarly between the clock S and the CLK2 there will be a delay of buffer and plus interconnect interconnect wire delay or I would say the net delay so if there are any buffers or something so that is also added here So as we know the difference in the clock edge arrival, clock edge arrival at the destination is considered as a skew. So this is one of our destination. This is the second destination. So difference between the these clock edge arrival at these two destination is considered as a skew. So that's the reason. In place of uh, adding the delay and some something like that, I just mentioned that this is a clock skew. Now, just to make things simple, let's assume that the setup and hold time for FF1 and FF2, that is zero. So with the setup and hold time, with the uh, proper setup and hold time, we will discuss that thing in the, in the next part. But right now, let's assume that the setup and hold time of these two flip flop is zero. Now this is our D1, that is the data. So this D1, in a sense, this, this is the data which we have applied here. So as I said, setup and hold time is zero. So I'm not talking about uh, this, that this data is supposed to be stable before this clock edge and this data or this data is supposed to be stable before this clock edge or after this. The moment there is a clock edge, after that, there is a CLK2 Q delay, which is also like no propagation delay of uh, flip flop. After that, you will get the Q1 data. So everywhere, like here also, same thing will, is going to happen here and everywhere. So you will get the same data. So like like here, you can see that at this edge, it's the same data. So you will get the same data. So that is your Q1. Now you have a data at a Q1. Now there is, there are two possibilities. 
the d2 pin this this d2 pin get the data before the clock edge so you can see that this we got the data q1 here which is before this clock edge so now there are two possibilities that this data transfer from from travel from q1 to d2 even before this positive clock edge of ff2 or after this positive clock edge of ff2 so let's take the first one let us suppose the delay is that this path delay is so much less that it reaches the ff2 before the positive clock edge here so now if the data reaches before the clock edge if the data reaches before the clock edge so this data is going to capture by ff2 the moment it will get this clock edge so in other way i can say that this data which is the d1 transfer to q1 and transfer to q2 transfer to q2 at the same clock edge now what i'm trying to tell you uh, when i'm saying the same clock edge that means i'm i'm talking about the source clock okay so this source clock edge so this positive edge for the clk1 is this and for clk2 it is this so you can see this one so this is a one this is one and this is one so both are one so this data so now this d1 data is launched by ff1 at the first edge it came at q1 then with the delay it came at t2 now this d2 because this is before this first edge so it will again capture this it will transfer this data from d2 to q2 so this cause ff2 to shift the same data on the same edge as ff1 and this is resulting a functional error so if you can see that so if you remember i i mentioned that there is one unsaid rules that the launch flip flop or you can say that uh, uh, the unsaid rule is the capture flip flop capture the data which is launched by the launch flip flop at the previous clock edge so that unsaid rule is not working here and if that is not working your whole circuit has a functional issue now if the data reaches a d2 after the clock edge so what will happen so let us suppose that your data will reach at this point after the clock edge now this edge has no meaning for this particular data now we will talk about this particular edge because this data is going to capture only by this clock edge so after the clock to q delay so you will get this output you will get this output so this thing shows that how important is the clock skew so if the data reaches at d2 after the clock edge ff2 is going to capture this data in the second second means it's meeting our expectation no functional error so this functional error happens so if you can see that this functional error happens whenever the clock skew is greater than data path delay so if this clock skew if this clock skew is greater than data path delay so when i'm saying data path delay means clock to q delay plus q1 to d2 delay so if this difference this delay time delay is less than the clock delay then there is a functional error so i think now you you can understand that uh, this thing that how the clock is used important as minimum as possible 
should be your clock skew in your circuit if you have minimum is clock skew you have more flexibility to choose a type of flip-flops and the combination logic delay if this skew is less so you have more flexibility to choose the buffer which has the less delay so right now your your constraint is that clock to queue delay plus this delay should be greater than this so you have a constraint so if you can remove this thing if you can just shift this here from here to somewhere here then in that case this constraint you can remove it so that's the reason it is very important to minimize the clock skew now in the design there are millions of gate and the flip flop so if you start thinking about minimizing the clock skew between every two flip flops i think it's not possible i'm not saying it's impossible but obviously it's not the correct way so during the cts we try to minimize global skew and as we already discussed in the previous part that the global skew is the difference between the shortest and the longest path so if you can minimize that your job is almost done so in place of minimizing each and every flip-flops each and every skew between the two flip-flops or i would say in place of minimizing the local flip-flop local skew if you can minimize the global skew almost done your job now once that is done then we can focus on the local skew and that depends whether that particular timing path is meeting set up or hold violations or not whether whether that timing path is meeting our timing constraint or not so just in case if you're feeling that still you are not clear i will show you some animation in the next part and i'm sure that will help you to understand that the clock skew uh, should be less than your data path delay stay tuned and we will discuss this thing in the next part